What's up guys? So uh, making this video on how to get your vehicle to 200,000 miles plus. Now I'm saying this with a grain of salt because obviously some vehicles out there are just built very poorly from the factory. So this is not a guarantee you'll get this many miles out of your vehicle. It's kind of a guideline though of how to keep your vehicle going and hopefully it'll hit 200,000 miles plus. Um, I'm using my Edge as an example because I bought this in 2013 with 71,000 miles on it. It's an 08. I am the second owner of it. It now has 211,000 miles. So I'm gonna go through and say and just go over what I've done to keep it going and then what major issues I've had, what small ones I've had. Um, so just to, to prove the miles, so you guys don't think I'm lying. Um, 211, 171. Okay, so let me pop the hood on this thing too. So when I got it, first thing I, first things I did when I got it, I went and looked it over. The day after I bought this thing, the battery died. The battery just completely took a crap on me. They would not fix it. I was pissed. So I went and bought a battery. So first things first. When you buy a vehicle, and let's just assume you're not buying it brand new. Most people can't afford a brand new car. So let's just say you buy a five-year-old vehicle with 70,000-ish miles on it. Let's just say there's no history on the car. You're not sure it was ever done to it. First thing that I would do, change every fluid on the car. Even if it's recommended at a later interval, um, manufacturers do that to show a maintenance-free vehicle. Ford recommended the transmission service at 150,000 miles. No transmission fluid's gonna last that long. I don't care who it is or what you say, what fluid it is, you're not getting that out of training fluid. Just like the PTU, they said it was a lifetime fluid. All it is is 75, 190 gear oil, and it's not a lifetime fluid. That, that, there's no way. So I don't even go off of manufacturer recommendations. I do it myself. So what I do, is every year, because I do them work myself, I flush my cooling system, I flush my power transfer unit, which is my transfer case, flush my transmission, flush my rear differential, and uh, I, I do all the fluids. Now, I do it myself, and I just go to the store and buy fluid. So it's not that expensive for me, okay? For you, if you don't work in your vehicle, I would say transmission, 50,000 miles, Coolant, I would say between 50 and 100, depending upon what kind of car you have, what kind of uh, transmit or what kind of uh, coolant you have. Um, I do power stream fluid about once every two years with some conditioner. Um, that's kind of a touchy subject. Um, I do that. Brake fluid, to be honest with you, I have never done the brake fluid in this thing yet, and the reason why is haven't needed to. Um, I, I agree, you should flush your brake fluid, but. Uh, these calipers were rusty when I bought the thing, and they're rusty now. And they're, they're very expensive. And I don't feel like replacing four calipers on a 200,000 plus mile vehicle uh, because of brake fluid. Brakes work fine, uh, should be replaced, yes. Am I gonna do it? No. Um, you know, if, if I lived in Texas or somewhere, there's no salt, I would have done this when I first bought the car. But living in good old Wisconsin where there's salt and it destroys your vehicle, uh, not much you can do on that. So, um, but I would recommend doing every fluid on the vehicle when you buy it so you know what you have, you know it's good. Check the battery, make sure it's good. If it's not, replace it. Um, I put a Red Top Optima in here from back in 2016 and it's still cranking good. On the flip side, the Optima in my sister's Honda, that was brand new, lasted a year and died. Got it warrantied out. And the one we just got warranted out is shit too. So, you know, that's uh, take your pick. Um, air filter. One thing on the Ford edges. Um, I had an issue where when this clamps down, it was actually breaking the gasket around the air filter off. And it was letting air pass that. And when it snowed out one day, it was sucking snow in. And it was hitting the mass airflow and shocking and causing erratic shifts in the car. Very weird issue. So I went to AutoZone and I bought a K&N air filter. Um, 
I don't really like those that much because they're pain in the ass to clean, wet dry, and all the shit. Um, but the gasket was much thicker than a disposable filter, and I've had no issues. I will say, I do like being able to reuse the same filter and not have to spend 20 bucks every 10, 15,000 miles on an air filter. So, you know, take your pick on that. But you always want to make sure your air filter's clean. Um, another thing is tune-ups. Um, this takes platinum spark plugs. I change them out every 60,000 miles. Okay, I don't let it go until the car dies on the side of the freeway, and then you're sitting there like, oh, shit, take care of it. You know, if again, if you buy a vehicle at 70,000 miles, you're not sure they're done, just replace them, okay? They're not that expensive to do. They're not that hard to do on most vehicles. Change them so you know you're good. Same with your belts. Look at your belts right away. Uh, when I got this, the belts were okay. I have changed them out twice since then. It's got a power steering belt stretch belt and then it's got a uh, normal serpentine belt i change them out whenever they get cracked i know i'm good wiper blades really doesn't affect how the vehicle runs and drives but for safety you want to check those periodically as well and then uh tires what you don't want to do is let your tires get so bald that when it rains or snows you can't stop or you get bad traction and you're sliding around you crash your car and now your car only has got 100,000 miles and it's in a ditch. Take care of your tires and make sure they got tread. Make sure your alignment's good. Always check your suspension, especially if you live in a state with roads that have potholes everywhere. This way you don't have a freaking tie rod snap in half and you go fly into a ditch. Um, we drove this thing about uh, almost 2,000 miles round trip to Tennessee and back. The next day after we got back, we went to uh, Wendy's. The left front ball joint snapped, the whole wheel and everything came flying off the side of the car. Not flying off, you know, but it, it pulled out of the car, pulled the axle out and everything, just destroyed all, I had to replace all the stuff in there to fix that. Um, I had just checked it before we left, and it was fine. Getting back, not fine. So always keep an eye on that stuff. Um, this thing actually has serious rust issues I have to fix underneath it. That's another thing. Keep your car washed. I washed this thing forever. But the salt up here is so bad, it just rots these away, especially on Fords. So that's something, too, to get your, your car to 200,000 miles is the engine stuff might run great, might drive great. But then if the thing rusts in half, then you're still out of a car. Um, but, but the main gist of this is to change all of your fluids periodically. So many people are so cheap, they're like, oh, I'm not going to change any of this stuff. And then the transmission fluid gets burned up, and then the transmission is no good. Um, if you got a transfer case, anything with the fluid needs to be changed at an interval. And don't let these companies tell you, oh, it's a lifetime fluid. They're not lifetime fluids, trust me. No fluid is a lifetime fluid. I don't care what anybody says. There's no, there's no physical way possible to do that. Um, keep an you know, ignition system on your car. Make sure your, your spark plugs are in good shape. Um, these ignition coils are original. I have never changed these out ever, and they're still working fine. Um, I have done struts in the front twice because the uh, first ones I bought were quick struts from Monroe, and the strut plate welds broke, and the actual thing broke, and they went through my cowl. You can't see in here, but there's a big hole underneath here, and that side did it one year later, so I had those warrantied out. So maintain your struts and shocks too. Um, don't buy them in real quick struts or junk. I have done shocks in the back of this twice now Just because of mileage. Um, I change mine out every 55,000 miles however I've got like a hundred thousand miles on these <coughs> Excuse me they're due um, but I'm not gonna do them because the thing is such <coughs> excuse me bad condition so I'm not going to change them out. And, and this is where you got to figure out, you know, like I said, my PTU in this one out back in March. And that was a 204,000 miles. Um, I had changed the fluid since I bought it. And we got 204,000 out of it. <clears throat> it actually blew the case in half because the idler gear broke. And uh, we're like, we're not going to fix it. So I towed it up to my new house. With the intention to part it out and then long story short winter came we need a vehicle for the winter up here so i was like well it needs 
all the coolant hoses, needs a coolant flush, needs transmission fluid, needs a PTU, it needs a passenger lower control arm still, needs the wiper blades. Um, so I ended up spending a little over $1,100 to do brakes, all this stuff on here. And uh, I decided to do that because I'm like, $1,100 is cheaper than a new car. And uh, it's not going to make it last forever, but by doing this next round of big job, you know, maintenance and stuff like that to it and rep repairs and whatnot, I should be good for a while, okay? I, that was at $204,000. I'm not $211,000. The only two things I know it's going to need soon is this battery is from 2016. So it's on its sixth year. So, uh, you know, it's, it, still, it still reads at 70% um, starting. So I'm going to let it go as long as I can. But before it dies, I'm going to change it out. Um, also, disclaimer on this, I have had to replace the starter and alternator on here. The starter went out at a store. I hit it with a hammer, got the crank back up, got it home, replaced it. The alternator died at like 201,000 miles. Replaced it with an AutoZone Reman 1, and that one caught fire. And then the three after that also caught fire because they were just remanufactured so poorly. So um, I have had to replace some parts on here that were just bad. The reason I did the coolant hoses for, they were original. They had 204,000 miles. They were soft. That's one of the things people overlook. They figure, oh, there's no coolant. There's no issue. I have heat. Coolant hoses will break down over time. They get brittle. They get soft. You really don't let those go because they always seem to break when you're on the freeway in the worst possible time. It's better to spend the money when you're taking your vehicle in for service or you do it yourself. Spend a couple hundred bucks, do that, thermostat, all that stuff like that, and you know you're good. You know, we got, we got 204000 out of the original hoses. Um, I bought some Deco ones to put on here with new coolant. Uh, got nice hot heat. Uh, we just drove this to Missouri and back. Um, that was like a 1,000-mile trip back there and back and no problems at all. And... Um, you know, so it's just one of those things of things people don't think about is what you want to think about and replace. Yeah, it sucks because obviously nothing is cheap anymore. So you go to the store to buy hoses, belts, you know, shocks. I mean, you're talking thousands of dollars by the end of the day. But the thing is, it's better to have that and replace it than you're on vacation with your family, driving through the mountains or whatever you're doing, and you got a belt break and I've got no power steering, you got no AC, you got no cooling fan or whatever. So you, it, it's really about proper maintenance. And that's the thing about if you don't have a lot of money, you probably shouldn't buy an all-wheel or four-wheel drive vehicle because the maintenance is a lot more on an all-wheel or four-wheel drive vehicle than a front-wheel drive vehicle. So that's something to really consider when you're buying a vehicle. If your finances, if you can't afford, if you can barely afford an oil change on your car, then you're not going to be able to afford to, to do uh, transfer case service or front diff service or u joints or you know tires twice as fast so it's all stuff you want to really think about when you buy a vehicle in the first place because if you can't afford to maintain it it's not going to last you it, it's just fact it's not going to last you um now i do know people that have old toyotas that all they did to them was oil changes and air filters and they got three hundred thousand miles and that's awesome and you will have that that's that's per that's completely possible to have happened um in my opinion, I don't think new cars of anything are built with that much quality anymore, no matter what it is. Um, I'm mostly a Ford guy. Um, I know Fords aren't the best vehicles in the world. Um, it's fact. I mean, these things rust out worse than anything else. Uh, but just because your, your aunt's friend's sister bought a brand new Camry in 96 and it's got 400,000 miles and it's only ever had a Tommy Belt water pump and air filter and oil changes, you think you're gonna go buy a brand new one and you're the same thing. Um, you're not. Uh, they change stuff all the time on them, so there's a really good chance that you're not gonna get the kind of miles like you used to. Um, but, uh, you know, something to think about. So, um, I'm sure some of you are gonna argue about this in the comments, and it's fine, go right ahead. Uh, if there's something you feel that I left out, put it down below for the rest of us. Um, this channel is kind of about helping people out. So any information you guys have that you want to, to add, uh, good, better, or otherwise, add it. Um, 
you know, really just help the rest of the people out. So there's something that, like, if you, if you have a, a 2012 Honda Civic and there's a common issue on those and you know about it, put it down below so everybody else that has those cars know that. So, you know, nobody's blindsided by repairs and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, keep it positive. So uh, if you like the video, um, I'm glad. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you want. And, uh, you know, if you're not subscribed, think about it. Uh, no pressure. But uh, if you want to see more of my videos, check in the back. I have 10 vehicles. On, well, more than 10 vehicles on my channel. I have 10 right now. But um, I got lots of repair videos on here, tool stuff, uh, kind of a, a variety of all sorts of different stuff. So if you like these videos or you have a question about Ford stuff or Chevy stuff, go back in the videos, look them up. I got plenty of them. Um, other than that, we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.